It's time for Agriculture, presented by Tricana Farms in Germantown, New York, a small-scale producer of heritage breed livestock and a wide array of vegetables and berries on just over 39 acres. They also produce a full array of garden vegetables, many of them heirloom varieties raised naturally, as well as an assortment of berries, including raspberries, blackberries, gooseberries, black, red, and white currants, mulberries, and elderberries. And now, here's Mark Scherzer. I'm on my last turnip, George. I really didn't mean it the way it sounded. My nearly daily call with my friend George does not have a set time, though it usually takes place in the 5 to 9 p.m. window. Such was the case last Sunday when George called while I was busy making turnip and sorrel soup in the kitchen. I put the phone on speaker for our conversation and set it out on the counter, allowing me two free hands to work. About the turnip-based soup, it was occasioned by my having accidentally pulled up several turnips while weeding to plant the last rows of the year. I noticed that the sorrel, two beds away, was in need of cutting back. It was thus the garden itself that dictated the ingredients, while the advent of cooler weather suggested that a hearty soup was just the way to take advantage of them. This, for me, has indeed been the summer of the turnip. It's really the first time I've enjoyed this vegetable. I started growing the sweeter, smaller Japanese white turnip varieties four or five years ago, but generally focused on selling rather than eating them. Having been introduced to turnips through the strong, bitter taste of the traditional purple-topped variety, I mistrusted any vegetable named turnip. But this spring, my friend Steve chastised me for for failing to take advantage of growing a vegetable he swore was environmentally responsible, nutritious, and delicious. And I vowed to make an effort to appreciate it. Thanks to other friends, the effort worked. My friend Tom a uh, meat and potatoes Berkshire man, explained to me that these turnips were called salad turnips, and when picked at radish size were excellent, sliced raw as a sweeter, slightly less sharp version of the radish. I developed a strong taste for those eruptions of flavor. My friend Eric, who grew up in his family's French restaurant, made me turnip and sorrel soup, a recipe he adapted from a parsnip and sorrel soup he had long been fond of. It turned out that this simple combination, sautéed onions, turnips, and wilted sorrel leaves, blended with broth, is both filling and sprightly, waking up all those little taste buds on your tongue. Inspired by the pleasures my friends introduced me to, I started experimenting on my own. While I really liked Madhur Joffrey's turnip and tomato dish, the turnip use I liked best turned out to be one I figured out myself. Cutting fairly large turnips into julienne strips on the mandolin, I used them for quick stir-fries. They blended well with Chinese spices, and the firmness and slight crunchiness they retained in stir-frying made them a great substitute for water chestnuts. I combined them with shrimp and other vegetables for a great 25-minute meal. The turnip has now been fully integrated into my diet. So there I was last Sunday chatting with George, who asked what noise he was hearing in the background peeling turnips, I replied. And we chatted for a while, with him occasionally making snarky little comments like, you do sound busy over there. And when I switched to slicing the turnips and my work noises changed, what are you doing now? As I was winding up the stage of the prep, thinking he was impatient about my multitasking, I said, I'm on my last turnip, George. There was something so world weary in my voice that he thought I meant I was at the end of my rope and said, poor you, how come? And then he asked me if that was really an expression. No, I said, it's not an expression, it's a fact. I have no more turnips to slice, and we burst into laughter, as it seemed, in fact, that that was the perfect expression for exasperation and exhaustion. We agreed we'd use it henceforth in that sense. For now, though, I can't yet let myself be exhausted. Fall is just beginning. As I was reminded in the turnip patch, this is an active time of preparation for the season to come. While weeding, I observed two grasshoppers mating on a turnip leaf, the small bright green male atop the large khaki-colored female. She will now deposit her fertilized eggs in the soil to be ready to hatch next spring. Now that the cool weather has come, the sheep are similarly engaged. The young ram I neglected to band has been mounting the ewes, as have his castrated cousins, who will produce no offspring but feel the urge to mount now, nonetheless. As Cole Porter reminded us, according to the Kinsey report, every average man you know 
Mux prefers his lovey-dovey to court when the temperature is low. That's from It's Too Darn Hot. Like the critters, I too am compelled to be active in this cooler season, and not just amorously. In the immediate term, there are scads of peppers and pears to harvest and preserve, which will be succeeded by cabbages, daikon, radish, and pumpkins. I've got trees and bushes on order that I must plant, as well as the garlic that must go in now to come up in the spring. I'm about to inherit dozens of iris corms George has divided up from his garden. I have trimming to do and brush to clear and tender plants to haul inside. I must paint my still unpainted barn and stock it with hay supply for the winter. And of course, I must get the storm windows and doors up on the house. Come late November, when all this is done and I have harvested the last of the fall produce, I can then collapse in an easy chair and make full and accurate use of the expression, I'm on my last turnip, George. Agriculture is underwritten by Chicana Farms, LLC, a small-scale producer of heritage-bred livestock and a wide array of vegetables and berries on just over 39 acres in Germantown, New York. More information, 518-537-3815.